Daddy. Anyway, can I do what I like? Is can I do? 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 I know there's a new face on the channel. Anyway, I'm Dr. Mawa Tusukukune, and thanks for my silly for inviting me to your channel. Tell me more about myself. I'm a medical intern in Gauteng in Pretoria, and I'm from all the way Rwanda Bay. Nyakroming funa yes nyakuluva. Anyhow, and I am a 24-year-old lady. So I hope that says it all. So I have some in the background to ask a few questions. So the questions I love. The questions are heated. I want to remember everything. Um, the first question. Where did you obtain your degree? I studied at the University of Pretoria. Tax, tax of Nix, guys. Tax of Nix. I know. <laughs> when did you graduate? I graduated. I didn't graduate because of Corona. But I was supposed to graduate this year. So I did my oath taking last year between 19 and my first of internship this year. So, yeah. Okay, let's go deep. What does uh, being a doctor mean to you? What does being a doctor mean to me? Um, that's quite deep. Um, let me just say how where the patients started and all this stuff. So when I was young, I had a family member who was very sick and I always wanted to be a doctor and all this stuff because I couldn't help them in any way. You know when someone's sick, you can say, ah, sad, sad, but they have them in any way. I knew the only solution was being in the health system. So that's where it started. Then ever since then, I've really, really loved being a doctor, helping people. And the most important thing is when you hear the thank you from a patient, guys, nothing is so rewarding than hearing a thank you from a patient. Okay. What do you wish you knew before you started uh, deciding you wanted to be a doctor, something that you wish you knew. Yo, guys, it's deep. I know it's great, it's nice, have shakes, heavy lives, and all that, but it's deep, especially when it comes to sacrificing. There's a lot of stuff you miss as a person. You don't, you miss functions, family functions, friends functions, church events. You can't be there for certain people because you're on call, and also yourself sometimes. Like you get so busy, you work so much. It's something you can give time to yourself you get stressed out depressed or mentally ill there's a list to it but one thing that i never knew was the risk i know it's healthcare i know this corona i know this hiv i know this tb but when you're in the fold and when you're actually the first person to be exposed that's so scary because sometimes you go back home and you have to go back to your family you're even scared that you infect your mama or your family like it's just yeah it's a lot okay you spoke about um, the most rewarding part about being a doctor there's something else that you feel like it's rewarding something okay. positive about being a doctor for me honestly it's giving back to the community giving back to people and like i said the first one is when someone says thank you to you you know that all the tears all the hard work all the painful feet all the solid feet was in some way but at the same time just seeing a change in someone's life i know they said hospital and you get to become friends with them and you put a smile on their face then they know they're in pain and when you see someone from very sick I see you come through the tubes, come into the ward. All of a sudden, they're walking around with fizzy and you, and they're happy. And then they go home. For me, it's amazing. The moment I can discharge someone going home, then discharge someone for death. It's so rewarding. Okay. Do you remember your first patient? Do not necessarily want the name, but. My first patient. To be honest, I don't remember my first patient, but I remember my first death. I know I went, I went <laughs> that way. But I remember my first death. It was a 24-year-old lady, same age as I, sadly, who was involved in a car accident. Um, I don't want to use the words like here. So it was hit by a car, then involved in a car accident, and came to the hospital rushing, but the driver, the driver was carrying the, the patient, rushing to the hospital. And, you know, she was mumbling words and all that stuff. One thing I remember in recess, I went to do a blood guess. A blood guess when you take blood and you're going to do blood tests, because I don't know how to touch your Then when I came back, the person was dead, just like that. It's just something I'll forget. But a nice, happy patient, ah, uh, guys, yo, guys, medicine is bad. <laughs> it's dead. Oh, wait. Medicine is tough, yes. You remember the happy patients? Usually those happy patients are kids. Kids, pediatrics. If I remember my first pediatric patient, it was twins, actually. Actually, the person in the background, the person asking questions, know the twins. It was two beautiful twins, full of life. That's very sad as well, because they're up for adoption. But they're full of life. You enter, you see a song, they were dancing. Guys, it was so much joy for me to enter the wards and just have to go see those kids. It was just amazing. So, yeah. Okay, can you remember your most difficult time in medical school? My most difficult time? Eh, surgery! Ha! Yo! surgery was tough. Yo! I mean, intern surgery. It was my first three months as an intern. Then I had to go into surgery. 
You wake up every day if you be there like at half past six or six, guys, nay, every morning. And you finish around four and five. And not only that, nay, they give you work like, yo, I can't even write a script. I can't even write Panado that time, guys. I know this Panado, but like having to write and sign Dr. Kukune was the hardest thing. Because I'm scared, what if someone dies? If you forget to do one thing, you sleep on it, you can't even sleep. You toss and turn the whole night until the next day. You know, surgery was not the best for me, so mm -mm, I ain't going back there. <laughs> Okay, was there, was there a, a time where you felt like you didn't deserve to study this career or something something that made you feel inadequate? Sajar! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to that. Sajar, okay, I know, I'm not sure if you, whoever's watching is a medical student or an intern or comes to or, or not even medical for, but there's a huge difference studying anything. Now, when you're still in the, in the problem of being undergrad, you study, you feel like you can be a doctor, the teacher, the treatment, you can say you give analgesic, what the doctor. But when you're actually in the shoes of being a doctor, you really have to act like this. When they're calling for research, ask any intern around you. Yo! You shiver, you get scared. Research when someone's about to die. You get so scared, you're just all over the place. So, hi guys, I was traumatized. PTSD. Hashtag Sitcha. <laughs> Okay, let's lighten up the mood. Is there any rotation that you enjoyed or one of the pleasant times? Oh, pediatrics. I don't even finish your question, but pediatrics, guys, the babies are the most cutest things on earth. Except being cute, but they are very. They forget. You prick them, you take blood from them, they cry, they cry, you say, excuse me, go back to their moms, or they chew in the wall, the next one they come and running to you, hugging you, doing all these affectionate cute things. They actually express their emotions than old people. When they're angry, they're angry. And accept that. You see a lot of progress in kids, honestly. You know when they're sad. You know when they're happy. It's so much different that all people have to go sit down, explain, and cancel. Kids who tell them they're sick, they're like, okay, sharp, I'm sick. I'll still play around here. All people are sick, they go depressed. And I know it's understandable because it's an age difference, but I really love kids. It's so, I don't know, I just love it. Okay, and then during those difficult times, what kept you going? Something God! <laughs> and I say this a lot on my other videos on YouTube. Oh, my bad. Anyway, but God, but God, honestly. Because sometimes you just feel like not going to waste. Sometimes you feel like giving up on medicine or giving up on life itself or just not doing anything. And the only thing that kept me going was God. I was like, God will never take me through medicine for six years. Let me go. I didn't graduate. But let me finish medicine. Then just to tell me, nah, bro, just stay in a house. Don't go anywhere. Nah, God. Like, I had to learn how to listen to different voices. My voices and, and all negative voices and listen to God's voice more. So um, the only thing that kept me going was, Mudim. Wow, So, yeah. Okay, just want to ask you if I didn't advise, uh, advice, firstly for advice people of students who want to get into medicine okay. and advice for students who are already doing medicine. Who wants to go into medicine? Yeah. Well, all right, so for those who want to do medicine, eh, be sure. <laughs> Get a circle of friends, get people from church, or get your family to pray about it. Because I'm telling you guys, this six years, no six years of just eh, saving lives, but six years of sacrifice and all stuff. Number two, make sure you actually love it. You know, make sure you're actually willing to to do a lot for it. You know, I, I said I know this is short, but there's more into it. And number four, no strength and weaknesses in your subjects. You can't just say when I do medicine, that time you know life sciences is not entering. Biology is not entering. Don't even enjoy studying it, you know? And I'm speaking the truth, but don't even enjoy Like, for example, like there was EMS when I was in high school and there was joke life and stuff. Like, those stuff that didn't enter, even now, won't hear anything. So, yeah, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and know what you want in the future. So, yeah. Okay, and then other advice for people who are already studying medicine. Already studying? First year, second year, oh, third year, so okay. SICs, like, those ones. Of a doctor. Keep going, guys. Push. I know you are fried in those word rounds. <laughs> I know you study one chapter. After one hour, I don't know what's happening. I know you try to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I wake up at 7 o'clock when it's time for you to go. Guys, medicine is tough studying medicine. Like, you need friends, you need family, everything. But keep on pushing. I know you feel like you're giving up sometimes, but keep on pushing. The end is rewarding, and I'm telling you, it's rewarding. I remember the last time I just studied so hard. Study hard now, but it's going to be right near the end. So keep on going. Believe in yourself. Don't care which consultant tells you whatever in the world run, which lunch tells you whatever, which intern even tells you. Hi, yeah, Masi. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You are doing good. You've been studying so much. You've got this far. Keep on. You got this. Oh, that's good. Okay, anything you want to share? Last words. Advice from life or advice from you as a doctor. Yo, Hashem. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the word wrong name. But guys, believe and trust in God.
that's how I want to say it. Because on my journey, not only in medicine, but on my life, there's some points that hit you in love, they just go far down, sometimes go far up. But the only thing that kept me going was just believing in God and trusting God. Like, even was hard to trust in God, but just have to say every morning, God, I trust you. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to do well for this exam. God, I trust you. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to do this for my mom. God, I trust you. Just keep on trusting. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, thanks to Sally, Sally, Sally for inviting me to this channel. And all the best people. Our greatest glory is never in falling, but in rising every time we fall. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like these. Thank you to the new subscribers. Very much appreciated. 